biology paper one for the year 2022 is uh, what I'm about to look at today. In the previous two videos, I did um, question one to 20. And so I'm here to look at question 21 and I'll just push this one up to 40. So question 21 for this paper, biology 1590 paper one for the year 2022. 21 reads, which of the following correctly shows examples and types of reflex actions? A reflex action example I picked up was the knee jerk, yes. Cranial reflex, this is the spinal reflex. Cranial reflexes are those that happen within the neck and head region. So blinking is one of them, sneezing is one of them, you know, swallowing is partly one of them. And then conditioned reflexes, an example is salivating. You don't just salivate anyhow, you salivate in response to a particular type of smell. So C is our answer. 22. The diagram shows the human ear. Which of the labeled parts is involved in balance? The semicircular canals, not the cochlea, not the eardrum, not the eustachian tube, but the semicircular canals. The answer there is A. 23. The diagram below shows the elbow joint in two different positions. There's this one here. You can tell that this muscle has contracted. This one has relaxed. This one has relaxed. This one has contracted. There's our bicep, tricep, the radius, ulna, humerus, you know, and then the scapula up here. So what happens to the muscle, muscles X and Y to change the position of the elbow joint as shown? So for this elbow joint to, to simply bring about the extension uh, uh, or, or where the arm gets to be unfolded and uh, this has to contract and this one has to relax so this was had contracted then it has relaxed so this has to relax to this then this was relaxed it has to contract so x has to relax then y has to contract see the two types of muscles work antagonistically to each other Meaning when one relaxes, the other one contracts and vice versa. Uh oh, I didn't solve this one. I'll leave it as an assignment for you. Which of the following correctly distinguishes a toxic risk, a toxic response from a tropic response? Which of the following um, correctly distinguishes a toxic response from a tropic response? A toxic, a toxic response, uh, question A, involves uh, hormones. B, it is a growth movement. C is the movement of the whole organism. D is irreversible. A toxic response. Toxic responses occur in animals, while the um, tropic responses occur in plants. Tropic responses cannot be reversed, while toxic responses can be reversed. An organism can go into a shed and come back in the sun, go back into a shed. That's a response to either heat or coldness okay so again a tax a toxic response may not always involve the movement of the whole organism so involves hormones yes to some extent um um okay let me just say let me let me look at this you you take a look at this because uh, this could be a sudden um response so it may not always involve hormones because hormones take time to bring about an effect so my answer would be this it may not always involve the whole organism, but this is the best answer among these that have been given, is the movement of the whole organism. A cockroach running away from lights, okay, he has come, he has come. They run and take cover because the owner of the house has come. So C is my best answer in that arrangement. Number 25, which of the following is the correct order of processes that occur during growth? Cell division, cell elongation, cell specialization. This is in plants. Next question, the diagram shows some seedlings. Okay, which seedlings or seedling shows epigeo germination? My answer is B, one only, where the hypogeo, I mean the, 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 the cotyledons come out, follow the plant as it comes out of the, of, the, of, the, of, of, the, of the ground. So my answer here is B. 27, the diagram shows asexual production of a, a, a unicellular organism. Uh, what type of asexual production is shown? Budding. 
it's budding. I can always say binary fission because a smaller portion is budding from a bigger one. Binary to the resulting daughter cells will be equal. Okay, and it's, it's mitosis, if anything. Fragmentation, no. Spore formation, no. Our answer is B. Question 28, the diagram shows the strawberry plant. Okay, and there are those parts. Um, question follows, what labeled parts in the plant can only be produced by asexual reproduction? My answer there is D. After this, you know, extension grew, finally it, it grew roots at some point. And even if you cut here, this would be an independent plant. You're going to talk about the leaf. These are flowers. This is sexual. So our answer there is D. So this runner here runs off from the parent plant and then at some point develops roots and the bud shoots into a shoot. Our answer is D. 29, the process, which processes occur in the carpel of a flower? My answer is C, pollination and fruit formation. Okay, pollination and fruit formation. 30, the following processes occur during reproduction in flowering plants. Which order do these processes occur? Fertilization, growth of pollen tubes, pollination, seed formation. My answer was C. The first one is first pollination, then stage two, growth of pollination tube, then one, which is fertilization, then seed formation. Our answer is C. So we arrange these and um, to give you the correct order in which reproduction takes place in flowering plants. Question 31. A frog, a frog becomes an adult when it has four legs and, has, and its tail disappears. Yes, the answer there is A. Number 32, the diagrams show four methods of birth control. We've got A, with these are pills, these are devices, these are sheets, and this is the diaphragm. Which one is placed in the uterus? B. These just wear them, these you just wear it on the cervix. This is, this is the pill that someone takes. Okay, once a day, but these, um, you know, are placed into the uterus and they are of different types. What makes tongue rolling an example of discontinuous variation? A person can either roll or not. It's all or nothing. Okay, so the answer there is A. It has no intermediate. Number 34, the diagram shows one of the stages in mitosis. Um, which of the following stages of mitosis is shown in the diagram? My answer there was anaphase. Anaphase, the point when the sister chromatids are just being pulled away from the equator, okay, or the, the metaphase plate. So my answer there was anaphase. 35, to which phylum do algae belong? To which phylum do algae belong? Chlorophyta. Chlorophyll. Algae has chlorophyll. So um, if you forget somehow, that should be able to... <laughs> okay, let me just say chlorophyta. Okay, it's not the plant. It's algae. So 35, the answer is B. 36, the diagram shows an experiment set up to compare porosity of two types of soil. Okay, so how porous is a soil to water? So we've got that diagram, water, soil A, soil B, cotton wool, funnel, measuring cylinder. It's like one cylinder collected more water. This one had more water than this one. So water passed more in this one. This one doesn't really allow much water to pass. After 10 minutes, results showed that different volumes of water are collected in the two measuring cylinders. The conclusion was that, I had a little bit of a tie here because I was, I was a little bit unsure as I was thinking, but my final answer came out to be B. So B has high porosity because it was sand soil. That's the only perfect answer. I was also thinking maybe A could be an answer. So A had low porosity because it was clay soil. You know, so it's very hard to tell if this was clay soil because the, the, the porosity differs. Is it clay? Is it loam? Is it sand? You know, so the two made sense to me. But uh, at the end of it all, this quantity of water is quite significant. So if I say this is clay soil, Clay soil is very tiny, has got very tiny particles. It almost doesn't allow water to pass. But this was a significant amount of soil. So I was thinking this could even be loam soil because it allows quite a much, soil, much water to pass. But this one allows too much water to pass. So my answer, my best answer there came out to be D. 
37. Which of the following lists of components of the ecosystem form the abiotic component? Abiotic means land living. Biotic means living. So my answer there was D. Water, sunlight, air, and non living. Number 38. The diagram below shows an ecological pyramid. Which of the levels shows primary consumers? Rabbits. Producers, that's grass. Then whatever eats the producer, like the plants, whoever eats plants, whoever eats uh, mushroom, whoever eats the first producers, let me just say plants are the producers. Whoever eats plants becomes a primary consumer. So my answer there, my best answer was rabbits. Rabbits are primary consumers. Question 39, the diagram shows part of the nitrogen cycle. So we've got animal protein, dead matter, ammonia, nitrate, nitrogen, plant protein again. Okay, so which stage depends on nitrifying bacteria? The bacteria converts ammonia to nitrates. That's nitrifying bacteria. So denitrifying bacteria are those that break down the nitrates to produce nitrogen. So my answer there, my best answer was C. The last question in this paper uh, is um, 40 and reads, an adaptive feature of an organism is, is defined as one that helps the organism to, uh, my answer was survive and reproduce, not just change. So if you have to adapt, it means you have to survive and reproduce. And reproduction involves production of uh, or giving off of um, viable offspring by a given species so meaning uh to, to ensure the continuity of the species so uh if the animal has adapted it means it has survived and is capable of reproducing in that new environment so this marks the end of our biology paper one for the year 2022 uh, i'll say bye bye